more like all this in Ethiopia. Hot. Growing up, I remember sitting in my living room, sweating, trying to figure out my relation to the Ethiopia. Didn't seem to share the same environmental need as me, but who had at least an age, I could barely comprehend. Now, my grandparents, they firmly believed in the three F's of life family, faith, and food. So every Sunday for 29 years, I wore the heat and faithfully showed up for dinner. The very day I turned 14, my fathers put me on a boat. In my pocket, he stuffed 200 lira in the address of a cousin in a place called Hoboken, New Jersey. The only advice he gave me, Tango Familia. If you just said that in English, it would mean I support a family. But in Italian, it means more. It's much more. It means I'm a man. I'm doing well for my woman and my children. I have a reason for being alive. There you go. Um, the very next day, I arrived to learn that my cousin had moved for a faraway land called Brooklyn. So, for six weeks, I lived underneath the pier of the Hudson River trying to earn enough money just to get back home. I was the middle sister of seven girls. And Frank, he was the first man, no, the first person to ever notice me. He was making a dollar a day as a carpenter's apprentice, and I thought that was a fortune. He promised that if I married him, he may, he'd become a fine carpenter he built for me. Me, an entire house. And he did it. He became this wonderful carpenter. And he built for me an entire home. My grandma, I, she had never made it past grammar school. Never even learned how to drive a car. Lock her in a kitchen with tomatoes and pasta and garlic. The woman was honest. On my 29th birthday, my parents had moved to Florida. And my sister Melissa to San Diego. Melissa had always told me the best part about being an American is that you could stay in this country and still live 2,000 miles away from London. But I stayed near my grandparents. Each Sunday, I rode a bus in from the city. But one Thursday, something happened. Something important. And what I had to tell them just could not be. Rams, Daddy! Nick! Your grandmother's gonna try to get you to do something for her. Refuse. <laughs> you have to do something for me. But first, you hungry? No, man, I can't eat right now. So I'm going out and off with him, okay? He has no time to do any of your favors, I don't know. What'd you have for dinner? Chinese food. Chinese? Nah. You're telling me that's food? Well, <laughs> I'm not going to you think so, yes? 30 years ago, I had dinner at a Chinese restaurant, and to this day, I had no idea what I ate. <laughs> I'm full, okay? Fine, I'll make you a sandwich. Yeah. You look hungry. How? Tell me how exactly do I look hungry. You're breaking my heart, Nicholas. Okay, fine, I'll take one small sandwich. What do you want, honey? I don't care. How about provolone and ham? Uh, that's perfect. Good, Nicholas, I'll make you a provolone and ham sandwich, and you tell your grandfather he can't drive Ah, oh, don't listen to her, Nick. Two days ago, in the Grand Union parking lot, he puts the car in reverse and goes forward. I thought it was in reverse. I put it in second. Right into a Japanese car. Thank God no one was killed. I barely did in the fender. Two weeks ago, at a 7-Eleven, we step on the brake, he steps on the gas pedal. We go very fast for about two feet. Right into a Japanese car. Thank God no one was killed. Gramps, we talked about this before. Driving. You're telling me what to do? I used to change your diapers. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't me. He never changed his diapers. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why don't you make a sandwich and I'll talk to him? And could you please turn on the air conditioner? It's sweltering in here. Okay. I'll open the window. You, you listen to your grandson. Oh, look. You know it's dangerous to be behind the wheel. My first call. 1941 to sew it. Cost $53 more than I could possibly spend, but once I laid eyes on it, it had the chrome wheels, black leather inside, dashboard that was the most beautiful sight I ever saw. Benissima. Ooh, 
And you know, I spent three months not shoveling coal into some restaurant furnace just so I could get that 53. And you know, once I did get that 53, and once I sat behind that beautiful dashboard and I held my hands on that perfect steering wheel, that's when I knew I could make a lot for my family. If I could own this car, I could make a lot. Tango Familia. I got another set hidden in my tool. Just <laughs> drive an emergency. Yeah, yeah. I was the first of my family to get a good job with the union in a Ford automobile factory. And see the way I did it? I told them I was Irish. I had to, because the only popular Italians at the time were the Pope and Sacco and Benzetti. And when they looked at us, do you think they saw the Pope? No. They saw Sacco and Benzetti. My father's folks. Nunzio and him. They lived two doors down and visited every Sunday to have dinner. Both children of Harvard were destitute intimates. They married at 17 and had two children. My dad was really Nick. He was killed in Korea. The day I married Nuns, my mother sat me down and told me something amazing. She said, Emma, just because you're his wife, it doesn't mean you're not as important as he is. Speak up. Say how you feel. Don't become one of those women who get lost behind their families. Ha! So I told Ford my name was Ian, Sean O'Malley, O'Brien, O'Sullivan, and they gave me the job. So, while nuns went to work, I made us a beautiful life at home. And I stood on that assembly line for 27 years to give my wife and kids the life they deserve. We struggled and made our way, because we're a family. Tango Familia. Tango Familia. Tango Familia. They were the loudest people I ever met. <laughs> hey, Nikki! Woo! Great. Let <laughs> me see you on a Thursday. Look, I'm glad you came. I have an announcement, all right? Wait, first, I want to take a picture. Of what? Of Why? Look, I got two rows left on this since last Easter. I want to stand next to your grandmother. Gramps, I have an announcement. It's one picture.
anywhere else. I've never lived anywhere else. Look, I know it might be a bit of a shock. Shock? I mean, why would it be a shock first? Your parents moved to Fort Lauderdale, and your sister gets married and goes to San Diego and has my great-grandson? I mean, my great-grandson. Uh, I'm old enough to have a great-grandson, and I've seen him, what, twice? Chris. No, you don't understand. Last time we got off the plane, I, I ran up to him with my arms out all stretched, and he just runs away from me. Thought I was another old person who wanted a hug. <laughs> Look. I got it this morning, and I want to tell you all first. You just going to go? Look, I gotta catch the next bus, right? Nikki. It's an AM meeting about the promotion, okay? We'll see you Sunday, Michael. If we're still alive, God's will. We'll, we'll talk about it then. It's a wonderful opportunity. Seattle? Oh, it's a 20 minute ride into the city. You'll be fine without food. Seattle? Not to worry. He won't go. You heard him. He said he wants to move away. He didn't say he wants to move away. He said he had no reason to stay. So? So, we give him a I should tell him. I should tell him that the doctors have done their test. And it's spreading. I should tell him that if he does take that job, if he goes to Seattle, it may be the last time we ever see each other. I haven't even told him I ever. But if I tell him, maybe, just maybe, he'll stay. Most companies have this unwritten rule. If you say no to a promotion, another one might not ever come along. That day, my boss had sat me down and said, this means we have everything. It means we're planning to think even bigger. And as any young man can tell you, the lure of a new life is as seductive as any love for me. That following Sunday, though, I had wrapped my grandparents, expecting them to be laying the guilt of something fierce. But they didn't. Did something worse. <laughs> hey, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Since when do you get the mandolin? Ah, uh, my father taught me when I was a little boy. And your grandmother found it the other day at the garage sale. So I decided to pick it back up, start taking lessons at the high school. I took one last night. The high school? How did you get there? Didn't drive. I walked. 45 minutes in the dark. In fact, if I dropped in, I left specific instructions to leave me on your doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you there? I think you What are you doing, man? What's up with the jackets and the ties? What? Can't dress up in Seattle, right? <laughs> anyway, I suppose we're going to Seattle. Both have them all over here. Want some nuts, Nikki? No. Uh, how are you feeling? We're good, Nikki. Have some nuts. Uh, no, how are you feeling about the promotion? Well, they're happy. Nicholas! Uh, Ned, um, about Seattle. Oh, you look hungry. We'll be eating soon. Why don't you fix your hair a little nicer? Mm -hmm. Good morning, Nikki! Hey, Ned. What is going on? Three days ago, I told you about my promotion. Now it's like I never even mentioned it. The Galloway. What's up? 29. 29 and eight. no family. You know, you're eight years older than your uncle Nicky Galloway. What's that up? Just been thinking about him lately. You, Nicky! Hey, Nan! How did your hair look today? I toned it into an afro, Nan. Alright, who is exactly how big you people? Who is this you people? <laughs> not people, we're well, your family. Oh, look, all I'm saying it's just a little too quiet, and I'm not sure what you're up to. I'll get it! Oh <laughs> my god, <laughs> who could that be? <laughs> Why, it's Caitlin O'Hare, the <laughs> unmarried <laughs> niece of my Canasta. Oh my god. Hey, Lynn, why don't you take the dinner? Right, and love a Wow, if I knew there were so many of you, I would have brought two bottles of wine. Oh no, this is so 
wonderful grandson. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Caitlin. Hi. Hi, Nick. It's nice to meet you. And I'm his other nanny. If you call her Emma, you can call me Ida. Absolutely. Hello, Ida. And I'm Nadia. Yeah, and I'm Frank. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Nadia and Frank. Hey, Caitlin, might I just say, you look like the kind of lady that any young man would be looking at. <laughs> oh, oh, God. God. Well, Caitlin, you're just in time for supper, and everything came beautiful. Uh, before we eat, I'd like to talk to her alone. Okay. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, first and foremost, did our grandparents happen to let you like to be here tonight? Oh. No, thank you. Oh, well, in case you haven't seen me, this is a blind setup, so feel free to run like the Nick, relax. I mean, I hate being set up too, but I mean, that's fine. That's my friend. Besides, dinner smells amazing. That's their secret. They sell you eating with the <laughs> Well, it's working, because I don't know about you, but I'm going to stay. Okay, you sure it's, it's not too late to escape? Look, we can just have a nice, relaxing Sunday dinner. Even at my most generous moments, I would not describe these people as relaxing. <laughs> Very pretty, isn't she, Nicholas? Oh, uh, yes, <laughs> yes. That's it, good. Okay, it's time to eat. Caitlin, you look hungry. Come. Oh, my God, oh my God, oh my God. Wow. 
hard work. Yeah. So, Vicky, Caitlin hasn't had a date in a while. Oh, uh, yeah, that's personal information. Actually, she's right. See, Vicky, we had a nice talk about it. Right by some produce in the path mark. Oh, what did you buy in produce?
first and foremost, I would just like to apologize. I'm really sorry. I mean, deeply, deeply sorry. Nick, you don't have to apologize for anything. I Look, I feel like I owe you something. Something expensive. So, how about we do this weekend? No acts if you're in therapy. Nick, I thought you didn't like blind setups. No. Uh, I don't. I don't just say I'm normal with my friends. I mean, I'm really intelligent, charming, somewhat sensitive, but in a very macho way. <laughs> <laughs> is this working? Um, maybe. Okay. Maybe he's not a bad start. Your mother was right. She did do good. Nick, I, I sort of have a confession to make. Uh oh. You got a boyfriend? Girlfriend. You're really a man? Whoa! <laughs> Nick! I knew you would be here tonight! Look, uh, I guess you could say I've been feeling a little lonely. Maybe even a little bit. A little bit. A little bit desperate. God, I can't believe I'm saying that out loud. But maybe a little bit desperate. And Oh, Emma so nice, and she said she had a grandson, and... Hmm, curious. Well, if I may be so bold, what did you think of the grandson? Uh, well, I mean, seeing you all here tonight, you and your grandparents, I was... I was just thinking of mom. Right, you said they were gone. I mean, I'm my like, mom's mom. The, the point I'm making is, just spent the whole night yelling at them. I mean, that's that's family. It's just how we talk. I take you and Beverly and speak so often. I mean, we never yell. We just talk. Talk? I'll have to try that with you sometime. Uh, when I was when I was nine, my grandmother used to read to me. She read these great stories, but not children's stories. But it helped her after my grandfather died. When I was nine, she read me the great expectation. She read you did it? In its entirety? It took six months. But, you know, she, would, she wouldn't read. I mean, the same, she would read to enthrall me. She would read to her joy. And it wasn't just covering me like a blanket. And, and, so, and, Caitlin, dinner?
anybody or anything. <laughs> and this was under great strain because I thought my grandson was having a heart attack. Turns out he did have an attack, a panic attack, they call it. So the doctor advised him to get some rest and get rid of any unnecessary stress in his life. So we thought, what better way than to have him stay with us? <laughs> Okay. Um, read the question, you're hungry. Great. Everybody 
is a process that plants use to form car carbohydrates. carbohydrates. What the hell kind of question is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Come on, give us another. All right. Wait. That's the whole point of the game. If you can't answer, you lose your turn, right? Yeah, it's just the first one, though. You gotta give up our minds sometimes. You gotta not thinking you hard, get fat. Who starred with Lana Turner in I Knew? Oh, that's a nice one. Uh, that, that actor. Uh, the guy with the ears. Oh, right. <laughs> I always liked him. Oh, that's oh, right. right. Oh, wait, oh, that's right. the answer on the card? The guy with the ears? No, I'm going to that, man. But you have to, they have to say what they mean. That's the game. That's, oh, it's fine. Calm down. We'll figure out who the guy with the ears is, okay? Okay. Nice one. about 
have so much. Your, your job, where you live, what it means, you just expect too much. This isn't your grandmother, Nick. That's right, because we never expected how you expected it. We were told a good life is when you find a husband and have kids, and you put food on your table, and you send your kids to school, and you don't die doing it. That's a good life. Then we went ahead and told our kids they can, they can have so much more. They can go to any school they want, have any job they want, and make wonderful people. And, and maybe that's the way it should be. But, but then you gotta go to a head doctor, and, and the whole family moves away, and we never have to do that. So, you can make a better life for you. It's not a worse life, but better. Just different things.
Oh, I can't tell stories like that. No, I mean, when that's all true, tell me. Tell me what it was like to be in there. Why do you want to know that? Mm -hmm. Why do you make me leave? You know the problem with telling all the stories, Nick. Some people just don't change. Um, but when I was a little boy, my, my father would take me out on the town for Christmas. And out on the canopies, there would be this sea of vendors. And they would all have these carts full of toys. And I don't remember much about the toys, but what I do remember is the colors. I mean, you had reds and, and blues and, and oranges, and of course I wanted to go whatever part there was, so I, I dragged my dad to the first one, and I'd point to the biggest and most brightest thing I could, and he'd say no. <laughs> and we move on to the next, and I don't know why that outcome would change, but I'd I point to the biggest and shiniest one, and he'd say no again. Kept going and going to all of the carts till we finally hit the last one and he buy me some little gray till I barely even no more. Of course I'd start crying and he'd have to take me into the house. Um, then not too long after that day, uh, I found out he fell into a net and they hit his head and they never found me. Anyway, um, eight years after my dad sent me off, I, I would take your mother out on the town, and there they were, like they never left the, the sea of vendors with all the toys, and she'd point to anything she wanted. And you know what? I'd get it for her. And, you know, I always thought my father was a bastard for not getting me anything he wanted. It turns out he was doing the best he could. And your mother told me, that's what your father wished he could do for you. We barely had enough food, for, we barely had enough to put food on the table. I'm not good with words, Nick, but um, it's, it's hard for me to see you go.
look hungry. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I just came by to see my Oh, he's fine. He just gets a little nervous sometimes. Oh, you just want to ride. Let me just fix you something like that. Oh, no, no. No, it's okay. No trouble, no trouble. We have three minutes before she comes back with a fully dressed 12 pound butterball turkey. Look, Nick, I'm sorry about the other day. You didn't deserve what I said. It's just. When I was a teen, my grandmother was in the midst of reading The Old Man and the And some days she reads with such excitement and joy, and then other days. She wouldn't let me in the door because she didn't think she knew. She'd sit there screaming at me, leave her alone, screaming, Who are you? Her eyes would be darting back and forth, and I just. been married for 55 years. Close your eyes and imagine that. 55 years. That's what Nikki doesn't understand. By planning out his life so much, by trying to stay away from marriage, he missed that. He'll never understand what that's like. How love can, can deepen to places that you have never imagined. 55 years.
sorry, I had a session with my uh, head doctor this morning. We had a lot to talk about. Uh, did you tell him about the panic attack? Yeah. What did he say? So calm down. And for that, you paid him money. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I just want to say, the last few days I spent with you, that was a really special time for me. Um, I don't know, it just, it seemed like we talked more than we ever had. Like, we connected a little bit better. I'm not sure. It was wonderful to have you here, Nicola. And I'm getting older, and um, so are you. I really like to spend more time together like that, okay? Nikki, you're staying! I'd like to, in the next few weeks. I'm taking that promotion. I'll be in a moment. Nikki. I mean, it won't be so bad, you know. It's just not a terrible thing, right? We can all come to visit all you want. The promotion is just, it's too good. I've worked so hard for it. The, the, the start of something so exciting. I want just to appreciate it. You all understand? No. I don't understand, Nicholas. I don't. Amen. How can you, Nicholas? We're here. Everything is here. How can you just leave your family like that? Why does everyone get so afraid? How can you, Nicholas? Aren't we worth staying for? How can you leave? How can you just leave? How can you just leave? Yeah. Crunch, you know the last thing I ever what do you want us to say now? Go! You have our blessing? I can't say that, Nick. And you know, I, I wish I could just stand here and watch you sail away like my father did and know it was for the better, but I can't. Nikki, your grandfather has something he has to tell you. Emma. He has to tell you this, Nikki. What is it? Is it something on Tell him we 
tasks that change of jobs in the city's brain. I have little time to spend with them those fun little weeks. And that last Sunday seemed to arrive so quickly. <coughs> I wish I knew what the formula was. How much do you owe those who care for you? How can you repay someone for their devotion?
caught my flight. And six hours later, I was in Seattle, my new home. And two days later, a 15 pound lasagna arrived for me in the day. <laughs> my new job, I loved it. More responsibility and more challenging. And within a month, I started dating this account executive from my office, Teresa, who I knew was immediately pretty special. Two months later, I flew back to my grandparents to attend the funeral of my grandfather. He died from prostate cancer, which had spread to his liver and his, his kidneys. My grandmother said she knew about it before I left, but didn't want to burden. Burden me. How could she not have said anything? Anything at all. If one of them did, no question I would have stayed. Years after Nicholas left, my friend, my baby, passed away. Emma and I shared dinner for nearly every day for nearly a year after that, until she too suffered a severe stroke. God rest them. I still make myself two meals a day, and I make a little something special on Sundays too. And I still see my Nicholas. Because of his new job, he flies to New York often. And he always gives his grandmother a little visit. That's me. Nicholas. Hey, how are you? It's hot in here. I'm <laughs> <laughs> hungry. The water's boiling. They might be able to be ready soon. Oh, look, I'm sorry. The conference ran late, but um, I have a flight to catch, okay? The water's boiling. You don't want to take a couple. Well, that's not. Let's just sit and talk. Not long after, I achieved what my grandparents considered the greatest accomplishment known to men. I married. <laughs> they go by me. And now when me and Teresa sit back home in Portland, awaiting the birth of our first child, my mind often wanders back to those few final moments I spent with my grandparents. And I wish I could maybe sum up who they were, or what they meant to me, and how they fit in the puzzle of my life. But instead, what is most clear to me is that they spent every day of their lives ensuring that their children were more educated and more successful than them. But what they didn't foresee was that they would elevate me to a life so far removed from theirs that they could not quite comprehend who I would become, how I would continue their legacy. When I look back, I too see only a vague reflection of myself. Still, they let me go. They got me to laugh. To this day, I 
great food in the mail. <laughs>